Uh, how was the process since you start using blogs and launching work? Hmm. So how did it start? Or yeah, the process since you start using blogs. Sure. About and then and so it started uh, blogging mostly from my desk. Uh, personal. Like, uh, economics, music, politics, uh, things I really blog about now. And uh, I just want a better blogging uh, software. Uh, so I started using a third on mobile type, and I switched to software called Beta, and then started to contribute to Beta and hack on the world. Um, eventually, the B2 code became the base for WordPress. Uh, once we fought the project. Okay. Uh, I share in some blogs that microblogging and social net networks will kill blogging. What do you think about that? <laughs> that they say I think it makes blogging stronger because um, <laughs> <laughs> the more content that you're creating comes with, be it on the social network or on Twitter or anything, that's sort of natural to bring into your blog, right? Because your blog is like your ultimate profile. It's the most important place you have. So, um, for example, you know, bringing your Twitters into your blog makes a lot of sense. So it doesn't mean that you're blogging less, it means you're just blogging more. Social networks and Flickr and blogs and YouTube and everything else are just different input mechanisms. So it's just different ways to get content into your blog. Well, uh, how do you see the, the future of blogging? Not only in journalism, but in publishing all types of content. Also, with regards to journalism, I think that it's going to start to supplant a lot of what uh, traditional media does. So you're going to see a lot more of traditional media creating lots and lots of blogs, uh, hundreds of blogs. And if you look at leading media organizations like the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, International Herald Tribune, they're already starting to really embrace it. Um, in terms of how blogging is going to evolve, I think it sort of goes back to your earlier question about what does microblogging do yeah. network I think blogging starts to encompass more of that and becomes more multimodal, meaning you've got to have more multimedia. You've got your audio, you've got your video, you post your content, your tweets, your everything. Yeah. Uh, it's integrated into your blog. Okay. Uh, what uh, percent, no, percentage, mm -hmm. percentage of blogs uh, remains active in WordPress? You, you, you have something to count that? Uh, sort of. So, <laughs> what we try to count is what what blogs are active, meaning that they get traffic and that people are going to interact with. Uh, that number tends to be about a quarter of the total number of blogs, um, which in some ways is really low and in some ways is really high. You look at uh, some other forms of interaction, they'll have attrition rates as high as 90 or 95%. So, 75% isn't great, but it's not bad either. Uh, how do you achieve the uh, Blogs in WordPress.com uh, got so, uh, so good page rank. <laughs> yes, page. Um, so I think that ultimately, when you think about what Google is meant to do, its job, what it's been billions and billions of dollars on, is to find the best content on the web, right? And so what SEO specialists do is they try to find tricks or things about Google's algorithm that they can sort of tweak to rank better. But ultimately, in the long term, what's going to work best is just having the best content on the web. So WordPress users tend to be smarter <laughs> than the average user, so they're just creating better content. And so I think Google rewards that. And we also do things like we try to keep spam on WordPress.com, so it's a trustworthy domain. And we also just basic accessibility into the HTML. Right? We have well-structured content, we make it accessible, the site's always up and track. Those things make it easier for Google to find the content. And the rest is just really up to the blogger. Okay. Companies like Yahoo and the New York Times use WordPress, the CMS, mm -hmm. to put their content. Why do you think that companies that have money, lots of money, use WordPress and don't pay for other service or something? Uh, great. <laughs> That's the beauty of open source, right? Is that they don't aren't required to pay. They aren't required to even contribute back anything. Uh, but many of them do. I mean, uh, do you have some uh, agreement with them or do they only use? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. Like when Yahoo launched their blog, I was I found out when everyone else did. <laughs> it was a complete <laughs> surprise. Um, with the New York Times, we have a very close relationship. We work with them a lot on the different things they do. So it's really, it depends. 
and you do open source. They don't have to go through my company on that. They can work with anyone. I'm sure the Yahoo has probably half a dozen people who can work for They are hooky. They don't need us. That's the cool part. In one moment, you said that was uh, free software. You have some kind of debate, or you, you always think about it like it must be free software. Hmm. <laughs> I think that in my life and in my you know, relatively short professional career, I've benefited so much from open source and free software. I mean, everything that I've done has been built on the work of others. Sometimes going back a few years, sometimes going back 20 or 30 years. If you look at you know, the new architectures. Um, so it just seems like the most ethical, moral thing to do is that I do should give back. So whoever the next Matt Mullenweg is can build on what I've done and create something even better. So um, there's never too much of a question in my mind whether WordPress should be a The one place where I have debated it is with our anti spam software. Because Gizmet is not open source, uh, but it stops tens of millions of spams per day. If we made it open source, it might not be as effective at, at stopping spam. So that's sort of a trade-off, right? Um, you know, the trade-off of the goods of the world versus blocking all the spam, keeping it in all people's blogs, versus the goods of the world of that code being open. Right now, I think it's more heavily to keeping the code a secret um, and uh, blocking spam, stopping spam. Uh, while you're talking about Akismet, I, I want to answer how did it uh, form? How was created? How was created? How do I put uh, some text and face? Because I, I, <laughs> they are practicing with me. <laughs> I mean you right now. You're looking pretty sexy. <laughs> oh, really? You gotta, what you gotta do is imagine. But, but, but I am sexy because I am Argentine. As soon as I get into my text and role, I think they will lose my, my appeal. So the trick is imagine like a big chunk of brisket. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. See, that's and, and, and it. Don't laugh. And don't laugh. You can laugh. First, this is kind of a no, no. thing. No, no. That's good. That's funny. So, I keep next being born. Um, it's because my mom actually. Uh, my mom wanted to start a blog. <laughs> and, um, and I was worried that she would start a blog and get all this spam. I think that's what I did all day. My mom sort of like served a Catholic woman, you know, in Texas. <laughs> I didn't want her to be exposed to this stuff. So I thought, oh, I need something that will not just stop spam, but stop it forever. You know, so she will never see spam. And logically, the only thing that could do that was a service that adapted to the fact that spam was good. You couldn't have a plugin that was static, that she would write one time because the spammers would just work around it. You know, sometimes in days, sometimes in weeks. Um, but with Akismet as a service, it can adapt just as fast. So it was really for my mom's sake. And it ended up, she didn't end up not blogging, so you know, it's kind of a waste of business. Hopefully, some other people have benefited from it. Hey, lesson. That's very good. <laughs> what, what, you, what difference do you see in uh, users of WordPress.com and WordPress.org, CMS? And how do you make your st strategies thinking about the difference of between them? Sure. So, I would say the difference is kind of like owning a house versus renting an apartment. Um, it's right for different people. WordPress out of is for people who want complete control over everything, right? They want to be able to tweak the code, install plugins, do whatever they want, and have complete freedom. And probably run it on their own surface. But just like owning a house, there's upkeep. You need to water the foundation and fix the roof sometimes. You know, there's a little more work. WordPress.com is when you want them to just kind of feel free. Right? You don't have to think about it. You can focus entirely on your writing, on your content. And all the rest just gets taken care of. You don't have to worry about hosting, or traffic, or scaling, or updates, or plugins. Is that anything? Is that difference? What strategy do you, you make? What's the strategy? Um, that's always just sort of going to be the natural division. Um, I think those are the two types of targets, markets that we target. How do you put control, can control uh, that there isn't racist content or illegal content, but don't, uh, yeah, don't censor? Uh, it's tough, right? Um, what we try to do is simply abide by the laws of the United States, which are pretty, I think, uh, pretty enlightened in terms of 
in the national uh, way of doing things. So, what we do is, since we can't read every single post, there's a quarter of a million new posts on WordPress.com every day. Um, we can't read every single one, so we sort of rely on people to report things. And generally, if it's very hateful or content that violates our terms of service, people notify us when we take it down. We do sort of proactively look for things that might be illegal. So, you know, people distributing viruses, aware, any sort of things like that, spam, of course, and we can take that down very quickly. And what is your uh, politics or your position with countries like China or Cuba? So, we're blocked, for example, in China. And the reason is that we don't, we don't censor our computer system. Like, you can say, uh, you can copy on the phone call. For example, and we're not going to take down that phone. You could criticize the Chinese government, and we're not going to take that phone down. You can criticize the U.S. government, and we're not going to take down that phone. Um, but in China, it is. And um, that's just something we're not comfortable with, so we're not really looking at actively being in that market. Okay. Mm. Can I interrupt? Excuse me. Can I What happens if someone says, uh, this is not a good blog, and you have to remove it? How is that? That it works? Do you study that blog? Do you read the content? And you decide if that person was right or not, and you just yeah. remove it? Sometimes. Often not. <laughs> like, um, for example, if, if there, was a, there might be a blog critical about something. Yeah. So, let's say there's a blog about me, and I'm like, ah, you can't say bad things about me. Take that blog. It's probably not going to take it. <laughs> um, so, that would make me unhappy, but it's sort of the right to the blog. Right? Um, but there, we do have a chance to serve, and we don't want to be hosting content not a hate or people saying they should assassinate them. That sort of stuff isn't something we want to be a part of. So we just try to read everything. And there always needs to be a human as part of this decision. Because if we wrote a script to try and figure out whether something was hateful or not, we might turn off blogs that are completely legitimate. So. Right. Great. Thank you. I can ask whenever I want. How is a competition with blogger that is such a, a big player? Yeah. How do you enfrent that? What? How do you that? Your biggest competitor, that is yeah, blogger. Well, yeah. So, blog is interesting because when we started, we were way down here, right? And we passed up every single other service. We passed TypePad, we passed LiveJournal, yeah. we passed Total Blog, we passed all of them. Um, the blogger is still there. <laughs> it's, they're, tough, they're a tough competitor because they have sort of the, the power of Google behind them, which is very formidable. But if you look at it, I mean, we're getting closer, right? So, I think there might be a day where we had a match them or pass them up. But in the meantime, it's great. It's good to have good competitors, right? Because it drives you to work hard. Um, it's a boring market when there's only one player. So having a few folks that are working on top and innovating helps us be better, right? Because then we can, there's ideas that we might not have, or users are telling us things they like about one another. So, pretty nice. Do you have some kind of relation with them? Or you only look about things they made and you learn from that or something? Generally, we learn from their blog. Perfecto. Le hacemos esta y...